Did you know that up to 75% of engine wear happens in the first 20 minutes of running? And the vast majority of that damage happens in the first three seconds after you turn the key. Engines rarely die from high speeds or long road trips. They die from the silent killers, the little habits drivers repeat every single morning. The truth is, how you handle those first 30 seconds decides if your engine hits 100,000 miles or makes it to 500,000. In this video, we are fixing your morning routine. We're breaking down the 11 most common startup mistakes based on mechanical facts, not myths. Whether you drive a Ford, a Toyota, or a BMW, these habit changes will keep your car running like new for decades. Let's begin. Mistake number 11 is the ego ref. We've all seen it. Someone starts their car and immediately stomps on the gas to hear the exhaust roar. Mechanically, this is a disaster. When your car has been sitting overnight, gravity pulls almost all the oil down into the oil pan. The upper parts of your engine, the camshafts, valves, and cylinder walls are essentially dry. It takes the oil pump a few seconds to build hydraulic pressure and push oil to the top of the engine. If you rev immediately, you are forcing metal components to rub against metal with zero lubrication. Pro tip, this is even deadlier for turbocharged cars like modern Civics or Volkswagens. Turbos spin at incredibly high speeds. Revving them without oil pressure creates oil starvation that can destroy the turbo bearing in seconds. Just let it idle for 15 to 30 seconds. Give the oil time to climb. Mistake number 10 is ignoring the Christmas tree. When you turn your ignition to the on position, your dashboard lights up like a holiday display. Most people ignore this, but you shouldn't. This is the ECU system check. The computer is pinging your sensors to make sure the bulbs work and the circuits are active. You need to verify that the oil pressure light and battery light actually turn on. If that oil light doesn't illuminate during the check, you might have a burnout bulb. If that happens, you'll never know when your oil pressure actually drops while driving, leading to a seized engine. Take one second, turn the key, watch the lights, then crank. It's the cheapest diagnostic you'll ever do. Mistake number nine, starting the car with high load accessories on, like your AC, headlights, and wipers. Now, to be factually accurate, most modern cars, roughly 2010 and newer, have a feature called load shedding. The computer automatically cuts power to the radio and AC the moment you crank the engine to save energy for the starter. However, the moment the engine fires up, those accessories kick back on immediately. This hits your alternator with a massive electrical load right when the engine is still stumbling to find its idle. It puts unnecessary stress on the voltage regulator and the battery plates. If you drive an older car without load shedding, it's even worse. You are stealing amperage away from the spark plugs just to run your blower motor. Build the habit, everything off before you turn the key. We've all heard that horrible screeching noise. That is mistake number eight, holding the key in the start position too long. Here is the mechanics of it. Your starter motor pushes a small gear called the pinion to mesh with the massive flywheel on your engine. Once the engine catches, the flywheel spins faster than the starter. If you don't let go of the key, the flywheel drags that little starter gear along for the ride. This destroys the teeth on your starter and can even chip the teeth on your flywheel which is a transmission out repair job costing thousands. The fix, if you have a physical key, turn it only until you hear the engine catch, then release immediately. If you have a push button start, don't hold the button down. Just one press is all the computer needs to run the sequence automatically. Mistake number seven is a habit passed down from our grandparents, pumping the gas pedal while starting. In the old days of carburetors, you had to pump the pedal to squirt fuel into the intake. But on a modern fuel-injected car, this is useless and sometimes harmful. Modern ECUs calculate the perfect air-fuel mix based on temperature sensors. If you press the gas pedal slightly, you add unexpected air that confuses the sensors, leading to a hard start or a rough idle. Critical brand note, if you drive a Ford, GM, or many other modern brands, pressing the pedal all the way to the floor during startup actually activates clear flood mode. This shuts off the fuel injectors completely. So if you floor it thinking you're helping, you're actually telling the car not to start. Keep your foot off the gas and let the computer do the work. And now, mistake number six, the grocery getter syndrome. Repeated short trips where the engine never warms up. When your engine runs, it creates condensation, 
water vapor inside the crankcase. If you only drive five minutes to the store, the oil never gets hot enough to boil that water off. That water mixes with oil to form a milky sludge that clogs your engine. Your owner's manual actually lists this as severe driving conditions. If you constantly do short trips, you need to change your oil twice as often. Better yet, once a week, take the car on the highway for 20 minutes. Get that oil temperature up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit and burn off the moisture. It's the Italian tune-up your car actually needs. We've covered the first six ways you might be hurting your car every morning. Now, let's take a short break and we'll resume with the top five, the deadliest startup mistakes you need to stop right now. Mistake number five is what I call beating a dead horse, repeatedly cranking an engine that won't start. We've all been there. You turn the key, nothing happens, so panic sets in and you just keep trying. Mechanically, this is abusive. First, starter motors are not designed for continuous duty. They draw hundreds of amps and get incredibly hot very fast. Cranking for more than 10 to 15 seconds at a time can literally melt the internal windings. Second, every time it cranks without firing, you are dumping raw fuel into the cylinders. This washes down the cylinder walls, removing the protective oil film and floods your spark plugs. Adopt the mechanics three strike rule. Try for 10 seconds, then stop and let the starter cool for a full minute. If it doesn't start in three tries, stop cranking. You have a problem that cranking won't fix, you're just breaking expensive parts. Mistake number four is a hidden killer that almost nobody talks about. Starting the car with the steering wheel cranked fully to one side. If you have a hydraulic power steering system, turning the wheel to full lock opens pressure relief valves and puts maximum load on the power steering pump. When you try to start the engine under this load, that pump is fighting the starter motor. It creates massive drag on the serpentine belt right when the engine is weakest and hasn't established oil flow yet. Do this every day and you are stretching your serpentine belt, stressing the pump seals, and inviting premature leaks. Always straighten your wheel before you turn the car off so you can start up smoothly the next time. Mistake number three is the single biggest factor in engine longevity, starting your engine with old, broken down oil. We talk about oil changes a lot, but it's most critical at startup. You need oil with the correct cold viscosity, the W number on the bottle, so it flows instantly when cold. As oil ages, the chemical polymers that make it slippery break down. This is called viscosity shear. Old oil becomes thin like water when hot, but turns into thick sludge when cold. When you start a car with old oil, that sludge cannot pump to the top of the engine quickly. For those first crucial seconds, your cams and bearings are grinding metal on metal using dirty sludge as a lubricant. It's like running liquid sandpaper through your engine. Don't extend your oil change intervals. It's a false economy. Mistake number two is specifically for my manual transmission drivers, trying to start the car while it's still in gear without the clutch depressed. Modern cars have safety switches to prevent this, but on older cars, or if that switch fails, this is devastating. When you do this, that tiny starter motor isn't just trying to spin the engine. It's trying to physically move the entire 3,000 pound vehicle. The sudden jolt puts immense shock through the flywheel, the transmission gears, and the engine mounts. Never rely on neutral. Always build the muscle memory. Clutch to the floor, brake depressed, then turn the key. And the number one startup mistake is ignoring a weak battery. We've all heard that slow, agonizing crank on a cold morning and prayed it would start. Many drivers think, well, it eventually started, so it's fine. It is not fine. A weak battery is slowly killing your engine. Engines need to spin fast to build compression heat for a clean ignition. A slow crank leads to incomplete combustion. The fuel doesn't burn completely. It leaves behind raw gas that washes oil off the cylinder walls and creates massive carbon deposits on your valves and spark plugs. Furthermore, low voltage causes higher amperage draw which overheats your starter motor and taxes your alternator the second the car fires up. If your car sounds tired when it's cranking, don't wait until you're stranded. Replace the battery immediately. Your engine will thank you. Here is the truth that vehicle manufacturers don't emphasize enough. An engine running down the highway at 70 miles per hour is incredibly tough. It can do that forever, but a cold engine sitting in your driveway is fragile. 
The difference between a car that dies at 100,000 miles and one that hits half a million isn't usually luck. It's discipline. It's the discipline to wait 30 seconds. The discipline to turn off the AC. The discipline to change that battery before it fails. Treat those first few seconds of engine operation with respect, and your car will return the favor with years of reliable service. If you found this guide helpful, please subscribe to Car Care Talks for more truth-driven advice. Thanks for watching.